Hello everybody and welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason. I'll be bringing you today's episode. As always, we want to thank all of our fans, our sponsors, our patrons. We appreciate all of your guys' support. Everyone that's bought us a cup of coffee, been greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. We've had a rough couple of weeks here in the family, been out of work for a week and a half, coming up on two weeks, thanks to uh, our old friend COVID running through us. Um, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time with the usual spiel. So all of you guys that are interested in what's going on with Sin City Living and what we plan on doing in the future with our live streams and upcoming events, please stick around to the end of the video or skip to the end of the video and watch. I will put most of that stuff in the ending spiel. Um, and I will try and update it every week or two with, uh, with more news. Otherwise, that being said, we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into today's video. So for today's episode, we want to begin explaining the center action and how center action works. I'm not going to discuss whether or not these bets are good bets, what is a good bet, what is not a good bet, how to play them. I'm just going to discuss how they work, what these bets are for people that are interested in starting to try and play the center action. So I'm going to start off with the three bets that are a little bit different than the rest. First one is the hard ways. Okay? The hard ways come just like the picture. They come as a pair, 5, 5, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, okay? This one is different in that it is the only bet up here that is not a one roll bet. It will stay up here except under two conditions. If a seven rolls, it wipes it out, or if an easy way rolls. And what is an easy way? Well, it's also the difference between high side and low side, which we're going to be using a lot later, so I want to explain it now. High side is anything that has a 1 in 36 chance of hitting, basically any pair. Pairs only have a one only have one way of coming. So a five five can only come one way. A low side has two ways of coming, also known as an easy way. So the five five is the hard ten. The six four is the easy ten. So if you bet a dollar on a five five, a dollar on the hard ten, and a six four rolls, this loses, this comes down. Okay. Why are there two ways? Why is that a low side? the easy way because it can come 6-4 or 4-6. Visually on the dice it looks like there's only one way to come, 6-4. But it could be 6-4 or it could be 4-6. So there's actually two ways or a 1 in 18 chance. Two ways out of the 36 combinations of the dice. Now what you'll notice on the layouts, each layout is going to be a little bit different. Most of them are going to say 4-1 instead of 2-1. Okay, this pays 7-2-1. So if I have a dollar here, I receive $7. Some layouts will say 8-4-1. It's the same thing. 841 would mean you would receive $8 if we took this dollar away for this dollar. Since we always leave bets up, you would receive $7. Basically, you'd be getting paid $8 and we would take a dollar out to keep you up. So you would get paid $7. So the hard 10 and hard 4 pay 7 to 1. The hard 6 and hard 8 pay 9 to 1. Why is there a difference? Not because either one of these, any of these, are harder to roll than any other but because it's easier for them to lose, and let me explain why. 1 in 36 chance for any hard way or high side to roll, any pair. So this has a 1 in 36 chance of hitting. How many ways can it lose? Well, there's six ways to roll a 7. There's two ways to roll an easy 10, 6, 4, or 4, 6. So eight ways to lose, well, and one way to win. Hence, 8, 4, 1. Not quite 8, 2, 1, which would be perfectly, perfectly even true odds. There is a house edge built in there, 841 or 721, 71, because there's eight ways to lose. So why do these pay better? If the hard six were to roll, I'd get nine dollars instead of instead of seven dollars. Why? Again, one way to win out of 36. But now there are four easy ways. So you have six ways for the seven to roll. And then for the easy way you've got the five one or one six and you've got the four two or two four. So there's four ways, so it's 10 ways to lose, one way to win. 10 to 1 true odds, so it pays 9 to 1. So that's why these two pay better, because there's more ways for them to lose, not because they're harder to hit. So these bets will stay up the entire time. Every other bet on here is a one roll bet. It wins or it loses the very next roll of the dice. So we're going to cover the next two kind of oddball bets that are on here. First one is the 87. This one is combining three combinations of the dice. Technically six, but visually only three. And that would be the 5-2, the 4-3, and the 6-1. In reality, it's 5-2 or 2-5, 4-3 or 3-4, 6-1 or 1-6. 
but to most people it's just three combinations of the dice instead of the actual six that it is. It's combining three ways to roll a seven into one bet so that you can bet a dollar on it. Assuming you're on a table that allows dollar center action. If you're on a $25 minimum bet table, they may make the minimum bet in here $5. Maybe. Definitely if you hit 50 or $100 minimum bet tables. This pays 4 to 1, or 5, 4, 1 if you want to come down on it. But most people will leave their bet up, so it's going to pay $4 if a 7 rolls. It's just combining three, three different numbers. Same thing with this bet, the any craps. Any craps is combining the three crap numbers, the 12 and the 2, which are high side because there's only one way for them to roll. And then the ace-deuce, which is a low side because it's not a pair. There's two ways for it to roll, one, two, or two, one. So this is combining the three crap numbers into one bet, just like with the seven, combining the three seven numbers into one bet that you can bet a minimum of a dollar on. A lot of people use this bet as an insurance bet for their pass line on a come out roll. It's most often bet if somebody has either a come bet or on the come out roll for their pass line bet. These C's right here also represent the any crap. So a lot of times if you bet it, it's going to be placed over here. It's kind of a courtesy spot for the dealers, makes it easier for us to keep track of the bets. Plus, there's a very common bet that uses that, which I'm going to get into well, right now. The next number I want to go over is going to be the 11, or the yo. It is also known as the yo. Why is it known as the yo? Because on a stick call, when we're calling out the numbers, if we say 11 in a loud casino, it can sound like a 7. So if somebody says an 11, there's a chance before they turn around and notice what happened, that a dealer has cleared off all the pass line bets, assuming that there was a loser because they heard 7 instead of 11. So we always say yo. So the 11 is a low side because it's not a pair. It comes 6-5 or 5-6, and it pays 15-1 to one or 16-4-1. Same bet. It's a one-roll bet. Wins or loses on the next roll of the dice. This E also stands for 11. So a lot of people will bet what's called a C and E, crap it on 11. It's a $2 minimum bet because you're betting two different bets. And we'll set it up right there. Very common bet on the come out roll. The C is ensuring the pass line bet against a crap number that forces it to lose. Well, the 11, I guess, is just a fun bet. It's just for some unknown reason because it's not ensuring anything. The pass line bet wins on an 11 on a come out roll. Um, but this has become an extraordinarily popular bet, so, so popular that every layout that I've ever seen has C and E spots on the side. Again, $2 minimum bet. Next we have the ace-deuce, which is just like the 11. It's, it's an easy way, low side, so it pays 15 to 1. Then you've got your 2 and your 12. These are pairs, so therefore they are high side because there's only one way for them to roll. They pay 30 to 1. All high sides pay 30 to 1. Minimum bet of a dollar, they win or lose on the next roll of the dice. So what are some of the combinations we can do here? Well, we already talked about the C and E. A lot of people will do. Another, hot, another, another uh, popular one is called the high-low, where you're betting the highest and the lowest. You're betting two numbers, so $2 minimum bet. Two bucks, we tend to set it up just that way. You've also got the aces, ace-deuce right here. Some people will call that a low-low. I hate that phrase. I call it aces, ace-deuce goes right there. Two dollar minimum bet because you're betting two numbers. You also have an ace deuce yo. Betting those two numbers. Two dollar minimum bet. You've got your 11-12. Some people call it an ET. If somebody says an ET, I will book an 11-12. There we go. I try and stay away from a lot of slang, especially since a T can stand for a lot of different things. Three, two, twelve. So, 11-12 right there. Betting two numbers. This one has a low side and a high side, pair and a non-pair. So it pays two different ways depending on what number rolls. Another combination, the high, the low, and the yo. High, low, yo. Right there. Three dollar minimum bet. Three, because you're betting three different numbers. Dollar minimum each. Another common one, three-way crap. See, the any crap is combining these three numbers into one bet that you can bet a minimum of a dollar on. Some people would prefer to bet a $3 three-way crap. A couple different ways we could set it up. We could, of course, set it up like this, but for ease of use, we tend to set it up this way so that we can point it towards the player so we can remember who's got the bet. This one has two high sides and a low side, so depending on what number hits is how it's going to pay. Now, if we were to do a $3 any crap, 
instead of a three dollar three way crop. How do things pay? Well, it kind of depends. If the low side hits, a three way crop would pay thirteen dollars, and any crop is going to pay twenty one dollars on this three dollar bet. But if the high side hits, high side hits, and any crop is going to pay twenty one dollars because it pays seven to one. Whereas over here, it's going to pay twenty eight dollars. So there's there's pluses and minuses to either one of these two bets and, and deciding which one you want to make. But the any crap you can do for a dollar, while the three-way crap you cannot. The last one I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be a three-way crap plus an 11. That has a name. It's called a horn bet. You're betting four numbers, therefore it's a four dollar minimum bet. It has two low side and two high sides, so it's going to pay different depending on what number rolls. This is also a very common one for a come out roll. All three craps to ensure the pass line bet against a, uh, against a crap number, and the yo just because it's fun, kind of like the C and E. Now the last thing I want to cover real fast before, uh, before we end this video, and this is part one by the way, is proper and improper bets. There's only a couple of situations where improper bets are common. And improper bets mean you don't have an exact amount on each individual number. For instance, if I do a $3 three-way crap, I've got a dollar on each number. If I do a $4 horn bet, I've got a dollar on each one of these numbers. Right? If I threw in $4 and said I want a $4 three-way crap, the dealers are going to throw back a dollar nine times out of two, actually more than that, probably 99 times out of 100. They're going to give you a dollar change. Because right? what are you going to have? A dollar 33 and a third cents on every single number? I know how that pays, and some dealers do. A lot of dealers do know how that pays, but they're going to encourage a proper bet. They're going to give you a dollar change. If you say, no, I want a $4 three-way crap, if the dice are still in the middle, then most likely they're going to say no and give you your dollar change. It needs to be proper. There's a number of reasons for that between shot-taking players and dealers that are, are unable to, to pay an improper bet. Um, I've also heard of uh, out-of-state casinos outside of Nevada, some of them that don't take improper bets, period, in any way, shape, or form because of uh, rules on how they're supposed to pay. The only times an improper bet is okay, it's a $5 high-low, it's so common that every dealer knows how to pay it. It pays $72, since it's high side either way, it pays $72. It technically pays $72.50, so you're giving the casino 50 cents. But this is a super common bet. Another super common one is the horn bet. $5 horn bet. $5 horn bet on the low side, which is the non-pairs, is going to pay you $15. On the high side, it's going to pay you $33. In reality, it pays $33.75. So you're giving the casino $0.75. Cents. But both of those improper bets are super, 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 super common, just like C and E's. You can do an improper C and E. won't be a problem. It just has to be at least the minimum, so at least a minimum of two dollars. But you can do a seven dollar CNE, and nobody's going to care. Try and do a seven dollar horn bet; they're probably going to they're probably going to make you throw them in a dollar, or they're going to give you change. Uh, but a five dollar horn bet, that's okay. There's better ways to do it that we're going to cover in part two of the video. But if you'd like, you can do a five dollar horn bet. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, and as promised, all the usual blah blah that I try and do at the beginning of the video were going to go ahead and put near the end of the video and uh, here we go. So thank you everybody for, for your usual uh, patronage, all of you that are, are patrons of ours, we very, very much appreciate it. Thank you everybody who's been buying us a cup of coffee. Love to say it's going to coffee right now, but uh, this month with the entire family out for COVID, it's honestly going to Bill's and probably the kid's birthday in a week, um, but we definitely appreciate it. We're going to continue working on these live streams. I know you guys have seen some of them popping up. We just got to figure out the look of it. And uh, some of the audio is still giving me issues. But uh, hopefully we'll be getting those live streams and the craps tournaments going as soon as possible. Really just going to depend on scheduling. My schedule changed. Amy's schedule changed. Kids' school schedule is fun. So once we figure out exactly how, how all those schedules are going to work, we'll let everybody know. And uh, otherwise, please continue emailing us with anything you would like to see videoed. And uh, again, thank you everybody for tuning in. We appreciate every single one of you guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.